In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with the hadiths from Sahih Muslim. We are in the second chapter, which addresses uh, purification, kitab al tahara. These are all hadiths or things our Prophet Muhammad said and did in regards to uh, keeping yourself clean, taking a bath, making wudu, answering the call of nature and the likes. Today we're going to focus on the hadiths addressing answering the call of nature and also brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth. And one of the things I want everyone to remember is, again, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that cleanliness is close to godliness. Allah loves everything that is good and clean. If you want to get close to Allah, you have to have a good appearance and a clean a, 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 a appearance. Allah doesn't like anything that stinks. He doesn't like anything that's dirty. You have to remember too, we have angels. The angels of mercy, they follow the believer. They surround the believer. If you want the angels of mercy to be around you, you need to keep yourself clean and keep your home and your environment clean because filth or dirt only attracts shaitan and his allies. So as Muslims, we have to make sure that our appearance is clean and also our home, our environment, your car, and all of that. And uh, I want to also, when we talk about purifying or cleaning ourselves, this includes keeping your breath clean too. Because Allah doesn't like bad smells. Not just body odor, but Allah doesn't like to smell your bad breath either. The angels don't like to come around anything that stinks. That includes your breath. And we talk a lot. How many of us are talking and polluting the air with our breath? And I want you guys to know that any hadith that you read that speaks about a tooth stick, this is a toothbrush. A mishwak or a tooth stick is no different than a toothbrush. Back in those days, they didn't have plastic and manufacturing plants and all of that. So what they did was they took would take a bark of a tree, cut it off and, and peel it back and use the bristles from that tree to brush their teeth with. It's just a brush like a toothbrush. They would also use them to comb their hair and stuff too. Okay, so any hadiths about a tooth stick is speaking about a toothbrush and there is no difference. All the scholars of Hadith all agree that a toothbrush and a tooth stick are the same thing. So we can take the Hadiths that mention tooth stick and apply it for the toothbrush. Unless if the Prophet Muhammad were living today, he would be using a toothbrush. He wouldn't be using a mishwak. He'd be using a toothbrush. He'd probably be using the, the oral G, the oral B kind. The best kind that really cleans your teeth. Let's look at that first hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If it were not a burden for the people, I would command them to use a toothbrush before every prayer. That's how clean our Prophet was. He used to brush his teeth all the time. Before he made Salat, he would always brush his teeth. That's not part of the wudu. The wudu only requires you to rinse your mouth. But the prophet would go even further by brushing his teeth because he didn't want to stand before Allah with bad breath. He didn't want the angels to smell his bad breath. So he would always clean or cleanse his teeth with a tooth stick, which is a toothbrush. Also, Aisha, who was one of the wise of the prophet, one day a person asked her, uh, uh, what did the prophet do when he first came home? What's the first thing he would do? And Aisha laughed. She said, our prophet was a clean man. He was very self-conscious about how he looked and his, his appearance and his, his, his breath. The first thing he would do before he would even speak to us is brush his teeth. Subhanallah. See how clean he was. 
before he even addressed his wives or got in the face of his children, he would brush his teeth first to make sure his breath was, was clean. How many of us do that? We're rambling on and on and our breath smells like something atrocious. And also our prophet, he would not only brush his teeth, you know, uh, before the prayers and before speaking to people, but he used to, every time he woke up, what is the, one of the worst smells is the smell of morning breath or the smell that your mouth emits when you first wake up. So whenever the prophet would wake up, he would brush his teeth. One of the companions said, whenever the prophet woke up for the night prayer, he would wash his mouth with a toothbrush. So again, guys, you know, Islam is all about cleanliness. And by the way, they didn't have toothpaste back then. They didn't have mouthwash back then. But if the prophet Muhammad was living today, not only would he use a toothbrush, but he'd use toothpaste and mouthwash too. He would probably love scope and love aim or whatever to clean his breath. So again, guys, even during Ramadan, even when you're fasting, fa brushing your teeth does not break your fast. Even when you're fasting, brush your teeth. The prophet used to brush his teeth all the time when he fasted. Use toothpaste too and use mouthwash. Because the law doesn't want to smell it. Neither do the angels and neither do the people around you. I know I don't want to. So again, guys, using a toothbrush is very important. It's oral hygiene is just as important as bodily hygiene. And also, guys, go to the dentist on a regular basis. <coughs> if the prophet... So the law who lay he was lamb were living the day he'd have he go to the dentist on every six months, at least once every six months. For those of you who have insurance, like I do, take advantage of it. Go get your teeth clean. I go once every four months. My insurance allows me to clean my to have my teeth clean at least once every four months. And when my daughter was a kid, I took her to the dentist once every four months. Do the same thing, guys. Take your kids. Take care of your teeth. So many Muslims have bad teeth. Crooked teeth. Nasty, decayed teeth. Take care of your appearance. Remember, Allah loves beauty. Allah is beauty. We're supposed to emulate him. Take care of your body, your teeth keep yourself clean okay so that's very very important and also today the next hadith they are the next hadith in, in this chapter of Sahih Bukhari I mean Sahih Muslim they speak about characteristics of the fitra first of all what is meant by that what is the meaning of the Arabic term fitra Fitra is an Arabic term that can be translated into English to mean things that come naturally. Things that are within the human being's uh, uh, desire to do naturally because it's good, because it's healthy, because it's clean. It just comes natural to us. You just want to do it. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there are five actions that people are just drawn to want to do. One of them is circumcision, to remove that extra skin from the male. Also shaving the pubic hair. You look at yourself, nobody likes that pu pubic hair, the underarms, the private parts, that hair grows there, it, it's, it, it's nasty, it kind of stinks. You want to take it off. That's part of the, the fitra. Also, clipping the nails. No one likes to have their nails grow to the point where they're jagged, ragged, nasty, and holding food and dirt and whatever in there. So you want to clip your nails. And also, for the men, clipping the mustache. Keeping the beard, but you know, shaving the mustache or trimming the mustache. These are things that we are naturally drawn to want to do. And Islam 
requires us to do these things at least once every 40 days. One of the companions, Anas, tells us a time limit has been prescribed for us to clip the mustache, to trim the nails, to remove the hair from your private parts and your underarms, that you should do these things at least once every 40 days because it's clean. I know the non-Muslims, you can tell how nasty some of them are. They like that pubic hair. Some of the non-Muslims love nasty pubic hair. It holds toilet paper. It holds all kind of filth in it. It stinks. Cut that hair off. That'll help take away the, the body odor. Who wants to walk around with toilet paper stuck up between the hairs of their behind? Non-Muslims like it. Well, we're supposed to be better than them, cleaner than them. So remove the pubic hair from underneath your arms, your private parts. Trim your nails. Now that does not mean, this hadith does not mean that a Muslim woman cannot have long fingernails. There is nothing wrong with being a woman and having long nails, but trim them. Go see a manicure. I get my nails manicured at least once every 40 days. Have a manicure as you know, uh, uh, clean your nails and shape them and trim them. You don't have to have them short like this picture. Trim does not mean cut down and make it short. Trim means to take care of it, to, 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 sh to shape it, file it, make it neat. Make it look clean and good. So this hadith does not mean that a woman cannot have long nails. There's nothing wrong with you having long fingernails. Some of the wives of the prophet had long, beautiful nails. But they always trimmed them at least once every 40 days. They kept them shaped, filed, and trimmed. The prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told the men to trim the mustache, but let your beard grow. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the Muslim men, be the opposite of the non-Muslims. Trim your mustache and let your beard grow. Okay, so again, guys, these are some actions that we need to work on doing as Muslims. It's an obligation. We are obligated to remove the hair from our private parts, to trim the nails, at least once every 40 days. It's just a form of cleanliness. And not only did our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teach us how to keep our breath clean and our teeth clean and all of that, but he even taught us how to answer the call of nature. That just shows how perfect a way of life Islam is. Once one of the, the unbelievers called himself making fun of the prophet, he said, I see your friend, you know, the prophet teaches y'all everything, even how to use the bathroom. He, he, he. And the person he was talking to said, that's not funny. And yes, you are correct. He has taught us everything, including how to answer the call of nature. For example, whenever we wipe ourselves, we don't use our right hand. And whenever we're answering the call of nature out in the public, in an open area, such as in the desert or in the woods, we don't face the direction of the Qibla to show our respect to our Lord. And also when we answer the call of nature, when we wipe ourselves, we don't use bones and we don't use dried up dung. And we also try to use at least three uh, pieces of toilet paper or three rocks or whatever. So it, it's not a joke. Yes, our prophet did teach us how to clean ourselves after answering the call of nature. And also, guys, you know, one of the things we do, too, we pour water of ourselves. But I want you guys to know pouring the water is just to purify. Remember, they didn't have toilet paper back then. You can use wipes now. Nowadays, we have wipes that we can use. If you use those baby wipes, it's the same as using water, but even better because you're wiping away the feces, wiping away the excrement. Okay, that's the purpose of the pouring the water is to wash it, wipe it away, to wash it away. But if you use the baby wipes, it's even better because you're able to get up there and use your left hand and wash it and wipe it all away. So yes, we do clean ourselves. 
And the reason why you want to clean yourself after using the bathroom is because the prophet told us that this is one of the things, again, Allah does not like filth. He does not like anything that's dirty. Allah does not like for us to stand before him and pray with dried up dung in our underwear, dried up urine on, in our underwear. This is what the Christians used to do. They pray to God all the time with dried up feces and dried up urine in their clothes. Allah doesn't accept the prayer of a person that does that. He doesn't accept that. So as Muslims, this is why we use those baby wipes. This is why we pour water of ourselves. We want to make sure we get all that urine and all that feces off of us. So when we do call upon our Lord, we can be in a state of cleanliness. Because Allah doesn't like filth. It's all about being clean as Muslims. And again, all the hadiths addressing the Qibla. Let me stress that. This is if you are outside using the bathroom and there is no wall. There's a hadith whereas once Umar went to answer the call of nature inside a, 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 a outhouse and one of the companions asked him, why did you face the Qibla? He said, because there's a wall here. When the prophet forbade us from facing the direction of the Qibla, that's when you're praying out in the open desert or the forest and there's no wall between you. But if there's a wall, you're in a, a, a building, then you don't have to worry about the Qibla because there's a wall between you and it. But to show respect, if you're outside in the open, say you're gonna you're getting off of the freeway and you want to use and urinate in the foothoods, turn in the direction other than the Qibla out of respect. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught the men that when they do answer the call of nature to not hold their penis with their right hand, to hold the penis with the left hand. Okay. So I want you guys to remember these are some of the rules that our Prophet taught us. For you Muslim men, when you hold your penis, use your left hand. If you're praying out in the desert or the woods and there's no wall or barrier between you, and then don't face the Qibla. But if you're inside an area that has that's covered like this, like our bathrooms are today or an outhouse, you don't have to worry about the Qibla. And look at this hadith here. A companion said, we came to Syria and we found that the latrines were built and they were facing the Qibla. So we turned our faces away from them and asked Allah to forgive us. But they didn't have a wall. Those were the old fashioned latrines that they would stand over to urinate in, but they didn't have walls. This picture here is after that. This is when they started building latrines that had walls. In a case like this picture here, you don't have to worry about the Qibla. You can face whatever direction you want to because you're surrounded by walls. But the open latrines that did not have walls that were not in, constructed inside a building don't face the Qibla. Everybody understand. Okay. And also, why is it that the men can't use their right hand to hold their penis? And why is it that we Muslim women and men, when we wash ourselves, we use the left and not the right? Because this is just a sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he loved to begin uh, to start with the right hand whenever he made wudu. He loved to start with the right side whenever he combed his hair. And when he used to put his shoes on, he would put the right shoe on first. And then when he took his shoes off, he would take the left one off first. So we do this to show our love for our Prophet. He always did everything good and clean with the right hand. Whatever was dirty, he didn't use the left. So wiping yourself when you answer the call of nature, we use our left hand. But what if you're not able to? Say, for example, you're not able to use your left hand. Maybe you got arthritis real bad in the left and you can't. Then you can use your right. What if you don't even have a left hand? Then use your right hand. Everybody understand the religion is easy, not hard. And also another rule that our prophet taught us 
about answering the call of nature is if you're going to answer the call of nature, don't do it in the middle of the street where people have to walk through it. And don't do it in an area where the people take rest from. For example, the prophet said, be on your guard against two things which will cause people to curse you. He said they are to answer the call of nature in the street where people have to walk through it or you answer the call of nature uh, in a shaded place where the people like to rest at. Who wants to sit in your urine or sit in your feces? So again, Islam is so clean and good, guys, that if you are going to answer the call of nature outside, go someplace where the people are not going to step in it or walk in it. Does everybody understand that? So what are some of the things that we learned today? Well, number one, Islam encourages cleanliness. And that includes also with our teeth, taking care of our teeth, brushing your teeth, cleaning your teeth, using toothpaste, using mouthwash, going to the dentist. And also we learned that clipping the nails, clipping your mustache and removing the public, the pubic hairs are part of cleanliness. As Muslims, we should clip our nails and pubic hairs at least once every 40 days. That does not mean that women can't have long nails. A woman can have long nails as long as she go, you know, get some trims them. At least trim them and clean them every once every 40 days. And also we learned that if you're going to answer the call of nature outside and there is no uh, wall or no building, you're going to do it out in a public opening, then don't face the direction of the Qibla out of respect. If there's a wall there or if you're in a building, don't worry about it. And also tr try not to use your right hand to clean yourself. I mean, try not to use your left hand. I mean, try not, yes, right. Try not to use your right hand when you clean yourself. You only want to use your right hand when you do a good deed. And again, never answer the call of nature in a place where other people may have to walk through it, step on it, or a place where people relax. Okay, so we'll stop right here for today. I want you guys to ponder the meaning of these hadiths. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a quiz like we had today. I think you guys do better with the true-false explanation quizzes. So I'll probably make it true-false again and have you explain why, because you do better with that. So we'll stop right here. If you have any questions or comments, type them on the screen. Don't forget, guys, we desperately need donations. If you want to continue to come to these classes and learn the basics of Islam, the true meaning of the hadiths, then please donate to keep this website on the Internet, www.sunnafollowers.net slash donate.php. Okay, we'll stop right here. If you guys have any questions or comments, type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ash